Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another week on the farm. And so it's Monday and so far today I have been loading two grain lorries with spring oats. Now I'm back at home load loading winter barley on this lorry. Giving her a quick grease up this morning because I haven't been greased for a few weeks. Alright, so now we're just having a bit of a bonfire. Got some bits, old bits of trees to, to burn. You probably remember I brought them down here a few weeks ago in the in the Richard Weston trailer. And uh, this is the first chance I've had to get down here and burn it all, so we'll have a little fire, we won't go too crazy because. Everything's pretty dry at the moment. Even though we had loads of rain last week. It, uh, it's just, you wouldn't even know it's raining now. See if we can grab all of this stuff. So yeah, Simon's been out with the top down this morning and cultivated, he's, he's out cultivating the uh, game covers. The, the uh, where we've got to plant the maize. So we'll probably do that in the next day or so. And let it dry off a little bit, let it haze off. And then we're gonna plant some maize. Got a blooming tree here. around at the trees the uh, ash trees don't look too good we've got all these nice green oak trees here look but then got an ash tree here that's dead there's a couple in there that's dead but then you look all the way around here let me zoom in a little bit Let's try and zoom in you can tell the ash trees from the oaks because the oaks are nice and green where are we? And then we've got the ashes that are up here. Dead. Dead. Oh, that's dead. Dead. I'm oh, struggling to focus. It was looking at my finger all the way down there that you can see the ash trees that are all dead. That's a willow along there, along the stream. But, yeah, so as they start falling down and we take them out, I guess, hopefully we can replant them with something. Hey boy! I'm having a rummage around in the grass. Looking for a mouse. We're getting there now. Just have a quick push up. Push it in a little bit. There go. Oh. I've been I've been waiting around, letting it burn down.
getting there now. I've been sat down here for an hour or so just uh, watching it. I was a bit worried about it catching onto the dead leaves and stuff and heading into the wood, but it's alright. Burn up pretty quick. It's hot. Much better having a, a hot fire on a cold day. The weather's pretty warm at the moment. Almost feel like we should be side of gym, but... Hopefully next week we'll be going. Afternoon guys, how are we all doing? So, right now I have got the powerhouse combination drill on. Amazon it is. Uh, I've got the front topper on because I've also got to do some topping tomorrow when I go up to the other farm and drill that and drill their maze. I'm drilling some uh, some pheasant cover maze at the moment. We've got some bits to do here. I've got about seven hectares to do in total, so not much. I'll quickly get out and uh, show you around the drill quickly. Show you what it, how it works and that. Oh, there's a rooks down here. Shame we're not allowed to shoot them. Right. So, it is. Uh, yeah, Amazon Power Harrow. Basically, you've got the tines underneath that spin around. Hopefully, you can see they spin around and break up all the clods. You can face, you can drill straight into ploughing with this with this drill, or this this has been run, been run through with a top down cultivator. Uh, it does a pretty good job. So then we've got a packer roller behind the behind the spinning tines, which firms up the seed bed, and then on the back of that we've got the drill. So let me lower it down. It is the drill is an AD three hundred and three super. So, we start up top, this is the, the seed hopper, we've got some seed in here, some maize seed, we've, it's got it's pink dressing on it to protect it from diseases and stuff, Ooh, dusty, right so basically coming out the bottom, in the bottom of the hopper, you can't really see at the moment because it's got seed in it. Maybe I'll, I'll um, show you once the, once it's empty of seed, but there's seed rollers in the bottom and that is, that all twists, spins round and drops the seed out down these little white bits and down these tubes. Uh, I've, and then it comes down these, the seed comes down these tube and then this, this disc, there's an outer disc and an inner disc Actually, no, it's just single disc. There's a little cold seed coulter there. It creates a little groove for the seed to go in and it drops the seed out. So basically, you've got, this is how it works. We've got this lamb wheel that spins around when you're driving forward, which then uh, the drive comes up here into this gearbox here, which then turns the the rollers in the bottom. Might be able to see them if I pull that back bit off. Take that off. Oh yeah, you can see it now. Look, you can see the rollers. Here, these metering rollers. They, it, you know, the seed goes into that little groove and it spins around and it drops it down the tube. Uh, I've got half of these shut off. Well, that one's definitely shut off because he's not got a tube. But, um, I've only got the back ones that are actually seeding because we want a, a wide seed space in. Let's get this back on. Is he on? No. Yeah. Yeah, we want a wide seed space in, so I've shut off half the I've shut off the front row. No seed is coming down these going down those ones, just the back ones. 
Yeah, so basically that spins round, spins that, rollers, seed drops down, and it slots it into the ground. This is how we adjust the seed rate on here. It basically opens and opens and closes the the I guess you call it a gate in the bottom of the seed hopper. Adjust the size of the, the, the gap. I haven't calibrated it, I just set it on 20 and um work out how much seed I've got, divide that up by the area that I've got to drill and um and just as I'm going along make sure it you know just keep an eye on how much seed I'm using and, and uh, adjust it accordingly to whether I'm using too much or if I'm not using enough so I did I did calibrate it the first time over time I used it so we know I know roughly where it's supposed to be set um, so yeah but some some years the seed is heavier than others so you end up with more seed in the bag than sometimes you end up with more and less seed in the bag so it has got belt markers but I don't use them. He's come down and create a mark for your next bout. And it's got pre-emergent markers. If we put it in tram lines, they drop down and create a little groove. So that the sprayer operator or fertilizer operator can see where to drive. I think that's it. All right, let's get in the tractor. We've got a nice little block here to do, so we'll use the GPS just to make life a bit easier. I haven't got an, I haven't got a straight edge to follow, so we'll go on. Um, what's it called? Uh, AB curves. Hopefully you can see this all right. Let me. Can you see? Yeah, sort of. Here yeah, we're going to AB curves. Want to fit? Set the field. Uh, field one. I've just set it. Um, I haven't got a field save for this equipment. So we've got John Deere six one ninety R. Implement one. Other. Uh, Let's see if it's on here. Nope. Um, let's change that to grain drill. Implement model. AD303. Amazon. There we go. Guidance. Equipment. Document. Primary tillage. We'll put the record in. We'll put that on the link arm. So when we lower the link arms down, that will start recording what we've done. It will start colouring in our field. And away we go. Set A, B, curve. Right. Uh, we want to put... So we want to put the PTO in. Rev up flat out. Drive forward. Drop the drill down. Basically, just the drill goes down, right down. And it you adjust your depth on the power harrow to, on the uh, roller on the packer roller that's carrying all the weight so we want to set this eight, set this up new just call it number three start recording so I want to try and get a nice uh, nice curved line now and uh, it's basically recording our line where we're driving. There we go. And when we get to the end, we'll click on end. And then that'll be it done. It'll create loads of parallel lines. Yeah, we click on end now. Accept. Job's good and lift the lift the drill up. We'll turn around. I did some uh, t did a bit of drone footage out here last year when I was drilling it last year, so I might cheat and use that. All right, we'll turn our steering on, press the steering button, press the drill down, PTO in. I could use the headland management and get that, it to do all that automatic, but I've just been doing it manually. So that's it, look, you see all these curved lines, look, that the tractor's gonna follow. 
how wide have we got the drill set? Implement. Uh, track space in 2.9 metres I've got it set at. So there, there we go. We should be able to speed up a bit. Better go and check that the seed's going in the ground deep enough. This was only cultivated yesterday. So it's dried off pretty quick. The ground is very dry. It could, I'll roll it. Um, I've got to go up to the other farm and drill some up there tomorrow. And then I should, once I've finished drilling it, I'll roll it all. Uh, and then it'll have some, Dad will put some liquid nitrogen on it. And hopefully it'll rain at the weekend and, and then it'll start growing. I could just do it in um, in land rather than keep reversing up. I just wanted to quickly check the seed depth. Hey buddy, all right. It's pretty knobbly out here. Oh, I can't see any seed laying on top. Well, there's one bit there. One bit there it wants to be in a bit deeper, really. It needs to go in a couple of inches. Yeah. It wants to be in in there, nice and deep. It's only it's only just underneath the surface right now. Pretty sure we adjust it with this on here. Um. So it's going all right now. What I've done is uh, adjusted the power harrow. So it got the power harrow is going in a bit deeper and loosening up the soil a bit more. So it's a bit softer underneath. And then those disc coulters are managing to get into the ground a bit deeper. So we're in about two inches now, which is good. And I'm going to try and turn here without taking out the, the feed trough or the feeder. Much easier doing it in lands. 
drop it down. If it wasn't for this screen, I'd, I would barely be able to see what I've done and what I haven't done, to be honest. It's so dry. There's not much different shade in the soil. You know, light and dark. Up at the other farm today, up at uh, farm two, up where on the farm where dad lives. It's pretty dry up here. You wouldn't even know it's rained. They've got quite a few big flints up here as well, so they're banging about in the power arrow. But we're getting there. We, we're, we're ticking along at 5k, just. Don't want to go too fast because I don't want to break anything. No point rushing. We got all day. We got all day. Got a nice crop of wheat out here. It's looking good. Proper winter wheat. It's looking very nice. And then over over there in the next field, that's all spring oats. They look good. We're going to have a look at the spring barley in a minute when we go over the other side of the road. So in this hedgerow here, I'd say 50% of these trees are ash. And then there's some oak. But all the ash, they tried to come out. There's a few that have tried to come out and leave, but they're just bare. For the most part, they're just bare. Bit of a shame, really, all these nice trees are just dying. But, um, yeah, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be a lot of wood on the ground soon. I'm pretty sure the roots just rot and then they fall over basically. When we get when we get some wind they'll just fall over. But they're gonna take some clearing up. So had a massive whirlwind come through the come through the yard and fill the back of Dad's tractor with dust. So I've just I've uh, finished drilling the uh, the maze yesterday, and I've just been doing some topping this morning. Topped this little paddock on the farm drive. I chopped up a rabbit down here, look, and the uh, kites are going mad for it. They just suddenly turned up in a matter of minutes. They were just here. that rabbit down there, they're chewing on. They're all having a fight over him. Must be about 10 of them. There's loads flying around up in the sky as well, circling around. Okay, anyway, so I just hooked up this old, this old flat roller. I'm gonna go and do a bit of flat rolling on this maze, because try and get the seedbed down as tight as I can. So uh, yeah, right, let's go and see what, it, what sort of job it does. Right, let's quickly get out and show you what sort of job this rolling is doing. It's quite windy out here. So we've got the three metre flat roll on the back. Feels pretty heavy. Must be a couple of tonne there. I know the tractor's a bit big, but you know, might as well ride in comfort. All right, so this is the seed bed, what the drill has left behind. It's pretty lumpy. It's got like these hard clods of clay that have sort of dried out. It's 
rock solid. Um, at least the seat's under the ground. There's one there on the top, look. But 99% of it's under the ground, which is good. It's about two inches deep. And then this is what it looks like when I've been over it with a flat roll. It's broken up, broken up a lot of the um, bigger clods. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's uh, all we can do really. It just wants a load of rain on it. I bloody six centimeters of rain on it. That'll sort it out. But uh, whether we'll get that or not, unlikely. But who knows? Oh, no, buddy. We're almost done. Only a few bits left. If you're wondering why I was why I didn't use the weaving drill to drill these uh, strips, is because some of them were only are only like six meters, and the weaving drill is like eight meters. So, and plus the power harrow combination is good because it breaks up breaks up the seedbed and gives you a lot better tilth. Um, and some of the uh, strips were ploughed so you can't really drill straight into ploughed down with the weaving drill but you can with the power harrow combination. Alright, lovely jubbly. I'll get you back on later on. We'll catch you in a bit. We've got plenty of dust anyway. This is like a bit lighter soil on this side of the road. It's chalky, a little bit of flint. It's, uh, we just, yeah, we just def definitely got plenty of dust. Ooh. We're getting a bit, of, a bit of a scoot on. It's not too bad that uh, it's rolling down nicely, so I don't need to go that slow. But, um, yeah, no, we, we won't be long now. Almost done. So this is the last bit. This is the ground what was ploughed, so it's a little bit bumpy. But it looks a good job anyway. Drill's done a good job of it. And now it's flat rolling. Always does a good job. So no. Spot on. All they need now is some rain and a bit of fertiliser. Morning folks, welcome to Friday morning and I'm back on this job again. Just rolling a trailer load of barley, feed barley and um, I don't bother turning it off, I just let it run out on the floor whilst I'm tipping the bucket and then scoop it up because there's a back wall I can just scoop it straight back up off the floor with the bucket rather than getting in there and turning it off every time. You get dusty as hell. I think that's bucket number five I'll just put in there, or four or five. So today, well this morning, I am rolling this barley. And then this afternoon I got a bit of a spraying job to do with the gator. See so that we just scoop that up. bar in there. Trying to hit the back bar. Yeah, I've got a bit of a spraying job to do with the gator, so I'm going to quickly, the gator's up at the cattle yard. I'm going to quickly go and see if I can get it in that trailer with the tractor before this bucket overflows. So we'll have to be quick. Hey up, buddy. Nice bit of winter barley here, look. Looking very well.
Still going. See, we made it in time. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Let you set this in the bucket. I'll do it one handed. Right, we've got a bit of a spraying job to do with this gator. It's a bit messy, isn't it? You can tell they've been using it on the, up at the cattle yard. They've been using it to go around and check cattle and that. Just some covered in cow turd. Right, we've got to do, we've got to get the spray. Round up. And this little spray room. Well. the yard spraying the weeds basically try not to spray the dog you come and get in here buddy come on up come and get sprayed then trying to do the free end do this with one hand just this is how we just keep the yard tidy just spray all the weeds basically tidies it all up nicely Massive mountain day. Oh, it was a bit down there between these buildings. Beats putting that thing on my back anyway.
So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, as long as the weather's good, we're going to be going. So fingers crossed the, what the weather's going to be good. And then we can knock some grass down and I'll play in, uh, in some, try out some new tractors. Uh, we've been waiting a while for the for the fast track. They've been saying that they're going to bring it for several weeks and uh, finally managed to uh, they're finally bringing it out so yeah all right well thanks for watching and i'll see you next week bye for now